Welcome to Certification Terminal. In this series of video, we are going to discuss a couple of certified ethical hacker question and answers. Let's dive in. How do you define cross-site scripting? Option A. A type of attack where an attacker uses a script to automate their attacks. Option B. A type of attack where an attacker uses a script to spread malware. Option C. A type of attack where an attacker uses a script to crash a system. Option D. A type of attack where an attacker injects malicious scripts into websites viewed by other users. The correct answer is. Option D. A type of attack where an attacker injects malicious scripts into websites viewed by other users. This option accurately describes cross-site scripting. It involves injecting malicious scripts, usually JavaScript, into web pages, which are then executed by other users' browsers when they visit the compromised site. This can lead to various consequences, such as stealing session cookies, redirecting users to malicious sites, or defacing web pages. Next question. The attacker noticed that both a user and an access point supported WPA2 and WPA3 encryption. Exploiting this, the attacker deployed a rogue access point nearby, offering only WPA2 compatibility. The victim was coerced into initiating a WPA2 four-way handshake to connect. Once the connection was established, the attacker utilized automated tools to decipher WPA2 encrypted messages. Which attack is performed by the attacker? Option A, side channel attack. Option B, downgrade security attack. Option C, timing-based attack. Option D, cache-based attack. The correct answer is, option B, downgrade security attack. In this scenario, the attacker forces the victim to connect to a rogue access point, offering only WPA2 compatibility, even though both devices support WPA3. This manipulation downgrades the security level of the connection, making it susceptible to attacks targeting the weaker WPA2 encryption. Therefore, this option accurately describes the attack performed. Option A, side channel attack, is incorrect. This attack involves exploiting information leaked through the implementation of a system rather than a direct weakness in the algorithm itself. However, the scenario described does not involve exploiting side channel information but rather manipulating the encryption protocol used by the victim, making this option incorrect. Option D, cache-based attack, is incorrect. Cache-based attacks involve exploiting the behavior of a CPU cache to infer information about the system's operations. The scenario described does not involve such manipulation of cache behavior, so this option is also incorrect. Next question. Which security measure is employed to validate a user's identity during certificate procurement? Option A, certificate authority. Option B, organizational unit. Option C, certificate revocation list. Option D, X.509 in Kerberos. The correct answer is, option A, certificate authority. Certificate authorities, CAs, are responsible for verifying the identity of entities requesting certificates. They validate the information provided by the entity against trusted sources before issuing the certificate. This validation process ensures that the entity's identity is legitimate and can be trusted within the context of the certificate's purpose. Option B, organizational unit, is incorrect. An organizational unit is a component of the X.500 directory service model used in LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, while organizational units are used for organizing directory structures, within an organization, they are not directly involved in the validation of a user's identity during certificate procurement. Therefore, this option is incorrect. Option C. Certificate revocation list is incorrect. Certificate revocation lists, CRLs, are used to identify certificates that have been revoked by the issuing CA before their expiration date. While CRLs are an essential component of certificate management and security, they do not directly validate a user's identity during the procurement process. Instead, they address concerns related to the ongoing validity of issued certificates. Thus, this option is incorrect. Option D, X.509 in Kerberos, is incorrect. X.509 is a standard format 
four public key certificates, and Kerberos is a network authentication protocol. While both X.5.9 and Kerberos are relevant to authentication and security in network environments, they do not specifically validate a user's identity during certificate procurement. Instead, X.5.9 defines the structure of certificates and Kerberos provides a framework for secure authentication. Therefore, this option is incorrect. Next question. Which key is used to encrypt the message digest in a properly implemented digital signature for messages sent through an insecure channel? Option A. The recipient's public key. Option B. The private key of the recipient. Option C. Sender's private key. Option D. The sender's public key. The correct answer is Option C. Sender's private key. In digital signature schemes, the sender creates the digital signature by encrypting the message digest with their private key. This ensures that only the sender who possesses the corresponding private key could have produced the signature. Option A. The recipient's public key. This option is incorrect. In a digital signature scheme, the sender encrypts the message digest with their private key, not the recipient's public key. Encrypting with the recipient's public key would typically be done for encryption, not for digital signatures. Option B. The private key of the recipient. This option is incorrect. In digital signature schemes, the recipient's private key is used for decrypting messages encrypted with the recipient's public key. It is not involved in encrypting the message digest for digital signatures. Option D. The sender's public key. This option is incorrect. The sender's public key is typically used for verifying digital signatures, not for encrypting the message digest. Encrypting with the sender's public key would not provide security in a digital signature scheme because the public key is widely available. Next question. LM hash is a compromised password hashing function. Which of the following features are specific to the LM hashing algorithm? One, the maximum password length is 14 characters. Two, there are no distinctions between uppercase and lowercase. Three, it's a simple algorithm, so 10 million hashes can be generated per second. Option A, one, two, and three. Option B, two. Option C, one. Option D, one and two. The correct answer is, Option A, 1, 2, and 3. Next question. When configuring Wireshark on a Windows laptop for testing, which driver and library are essential to enable promiscuous mode for the NIC? Option A, libpcap. Option B, winprom. Option C, winpcap. Option D, awinpcap. The correct answer is, Option C, winpcap. WinPCAP is a widely used library and driver for capturing network traffic on Windows systems. It allows Wireshark to access the network interface card, NIC, in promiscuous mode, enabling the capture of all network packets, including those not addressed to the specific machine. Therefore, this option is correct. Option A, LibPCAP, is incorrect. LibPCAP is a library used on Unix-like systems, such as Linux and macOS, for capturing network traffic. It is not typically used on Windows systems. Option B, WinProm, is incorrect. WinProm is not a known or widely used library or driver for capturing network traffic on Windows systems. It appears to be a fictitious option. Option D, AWinPCAP, is incorrect. AWinPCAP is not a recognized library or driver for Wireshark, K or network traffic capturing on Windows systems. This option seems to be a misinterpretation or variation of WinPCAP. Next question. Which type of legal measures would come into effect if CEOs were found accountable for the failure to properly safeguard their company's assets and information systems? Option A, international. Option B, common. Option C, criminal. Option D, civil. The correct answer is option D, Civil. Civil legal measures involve lawsuits and legal actions between private parties seeking remedies for civil wrongs or breaches of duty. In the context of CEO accountability for cybersecurity failures, civil legal measures would likely involve lawsuits filed by shareholders, customers, 
or other affected parties seeking compensation for damages resulting from the failure to safeguard company assets and information systems. Civil actions could include claims for negligence, breach of fiduciary duty, or breach of contract. Therefore, this option is correct as it accurately reflects the type of legal measures that would typically come into effect in such situations. Option A, international, is incorrect. International legal measures typically involve treaties, agreements, and conventions between nations to address issues that transcend national borders. While international laws and agreements may influence aspects of corporate governance and cybersecurity, they are not the primary legal measures that would come into effect if CEOs were found accountable for the failure to safeguard company assets and information systems. Therefore, this option is incorrect. Option B, common, is incorrect. Common law refers to legal principles and precedents established through court decisions rather than statutes. While common law may play a role in shaping legal interpretations and liability standards, it is not a distinct type of legal measure that would come into effect in response to CEO accountability for failing to safeguard company assets and information systems. Therefore, this option is incorrect. Option C, criminal, is incorrect. Criminal legal measures involve the prosecution and punishment of individuals or entities for violations of criminal statutes. While criminal charges could potentially arise in cases of severe negligence or intentional misconduct leading to harm or loss of company assets, they are not the primary legal measures that would come into effect in response to CEO accountability for cybersecurity failures. Therefore, this option is incorrect. Next question. Which cryptographic components are exchanged during the encryption and decryption procedures? Option A, user password. Option B, public keys. Option C, public and private keys. Option D, private keys. The correct answer is option B, public keys. In summary, asymmetric encryption relies on a pair of keys, a public key for encryption and a private key for decryption. The public key is shared with others allowing them to send encrypted messages to the owner of the key. The private key is kept secret and used by the owner to decrypt messages encrypted with their public key. User passwords are not directly involved in the encryption and decryption processes, but are used for authentication and key derivation in securing communication channels. Next question, what is the optimal approach for refining security alert configurations? Option A, Rise false positives, rise false negatives. Option B, tune to avoid false positives and false negatives. Option C, decrease false negatives. Option D, decrease the false positives. The correct answer is, option D, decrease the false positives. In summary, optimizing a CM's threat detection coverage while minimizing false positive rates is a complex and ongoing process that requires a combination of technical expertise, data analysis, collaboration, and continuous improvement. By fine-tuning threat detection rules and striking the right balance between coverage and false positives, organizations can enhance their cybersecurity posture and better protect against evolving threats. Next question. How much expertise does a script kitty typically possess? Option A, high. Option B, low. Option C, average. Option D, advanced. The correct answer is, option B, low. This option correctly reflects the proficiency level commonly found in script kitties. Script kitties are individuals with limited technical skills who rely on pre-packaged tool, S and scripts to carry out attacks. They often lack a deep understanding of cybersecurity concepts and techniques and may struggle to develop their own exploits or adapt to changing security measures. Therefore, option B is the correct choice. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if these questions add value to your preparation. We'll meet in the next video. Take care until then.